Yeah, definitely. it up and picking it up and loving I'm living and picking it up <laughs> I love that and see <laughs> hi how are you I'm good how are you great welcome to coach talk it's coach talk basically my channel where we interview interesting people interesting stories mm -hmm. let them spotlight themselves grow their brands allow the person to be more known inside the space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So could you start by introducing yourself? Who are you? Okay, so um, I'm a singer-songwriter yeah. at most. Um, I am a practicing like fairy. Okay. Yeah, so like I'm actually a fairy. Um, okay. I'm part of the fairy ring also. So like we've got like other fairies around the world also. It's very cool. It's a private society. Not too many people know about it. Um, yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah. no! It's, just, <laughs> it's nothing like that. It's just um, it's just people that are more in touch with the fey deity. So around this time, it's evoked, and you know, yeah. people start practicing fairy magic. Oh. Yeah, is like fairy magic good. Yeah, it is because it betters you. And um, I actually started seeing fairies at a very early age when I was young. Like I would always say, "Oh, I'm a fairy. I'm this," and like I would watch I would watch Wings Club all the time. And like it was really cool until I actually realized I was one and I was like, oh, I actually am one? That's so cool. You are a fairy. Yeah. You see fairies. Yes. Are there fairies around us right now? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the presence of one. Yeah. But I want to talk a bit more on your person and as far as what are you doing right now? What am I doing right now? Dream. Well, right now I'm just um, I'm focusing on my artistry as a person, so I'm growing my brand at the same time. Um, I'm focusing on my small business also. Like um, I'm a content lens practitioner, so if you Ooh. want crazy eye colors, <laughs> come to me. Okay. Um, I want to start my own makeup like palette and everything, so that's probably gonna fall under my brand later on. And I'm also working on a rock album right now, so I'm trying to revive the emo punk subculture. Very busy person. Yeah. So are you in school? Yeah, I am. Um, How do you balance everything? The world? Yeah. Um, it's more of fixing your mind to something. If you've got like a goal, mm -hmm. you have to work towards it and believe everything's just going to work in coordination and correspondence. So you have to balance your school life and your work life at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you studying? I'm at the University of Zambia. What are you studying? Oh, I heard where. No, 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 no. What are you studying? I am studying psychology and journalism. How's that for you? Perfect. Psychology is a minor, journalism is my major. And how do we get into those? Hmm? What's your story behind that? Well, for journal well, it's actually media and journalism. So, well, I'm a media personality, obviously. So, yeah. if I have the qualification, it'll be easier for me to like start my own firm. And I eventually do want to start a school of the arts. Okay. So, um, yeah, right. you know, it just it works. That's fair enough. Mm -hmm. And as far as music, how have you found that? I know the underground scene is a bit crazy. People stay up coming for life. <laughs> Can we go get <laughs> <laughs> Like, no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> finding the penetration. I know market. people that have been underground for so long, but, um, well, I just, I believe in myself because, um, I do know quite a number of like really huge artists. Bomb is a really good friend of mine. Okay. And Shadai is like a really good friend. And like these guys support me through thick and thin. Like I, I thank God for Bombshell. I thank God that she's like the best friend and like a mother figure to me too. So like it's just it's amazing that you know. You still have answered my question. What? <laughs> How have you found yourself in the marketplace? Where do you think you stand? I'm on the old scene though. Is it? Yeah. You don't the think old... you're on the rise? Or... I am on the rise. I think I might break through soon. I feel it strongly. I intuitively feel this year is going to change so many things artistically, especially for my alternative babies because being black and alternative isn't easy for many people. You get you get so 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 many things said about you and a lot of backlash from different kind of different kinds of people and we are in um we're in a Christian nation, so we have religious restrictions too. So it's kind of crazy that we have that. 
And has religion played a part in probably hampering you, do you think, with success? Or at least the conservative culture? Mm, not really, mm. you know. I've never really been too religious. I have been spiritual, but religious, not so much. And what are your thoughts on Christ? Well, in Christian context, he does exist okay. for the Christians. Yeah. And I can't say anything bad about him because that's what they believe in. So when did you make a transition? Because obviously we all grew up yeah, we. I was actually born in the Catholic Church, um, baptized and confirmed Hello. in the Catholic Church. I do believe in Mother Mary and I do pray to Mary and Christ. Mm -hmm. So I recite the rosary, what a rosary. Part of me is still Catholic, but part of me strongly believes in my spirituality because like spirituality is just like so full and amazing. And what is spirituality then for those who are been uneducated? Well, spirituality is basically you tapping into the energy of the universe and understanding yourself as a whole and understanding your power as a person okay. killing your ego and yeah you have you must kill your ego to birth a new you but ego means i am Latin, so killing your ego that means you kill yourself not so no that's what ego means ego mm -hmm. is i mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what it means in latin well that's what it means in latin but at least as far as i know you have yeah. to kill your ego you shed it and then you start a new life but don't you think you have to have a bit of an ego especially I mean, yeah, mm. but you know, it's really different for me. Okay. Because I know everything is just going to move fine. Would you say music is your muse then? It really is. It's like an escape from actuality. It's, it's the possibilities and limits are like endless yeah. when you're cre the creation, my creation process personally. It's, right. We'll get into that later, but like, <laughs> it's just, it's so amazing. I can create, I can write a whole album in like three days. I'm in the right state of mind. And who do you listen to? Hmm? Who do you listen to? Um, I listen to a lot of alternative. I listen to a lot of pop. Okay. I listen to a lot of rock too. So mostly Lana Del Rey. I listen to um, Maggie Lindham. Oh my God, Maggie Lindham is so cool. Mm -hmm. Sucker Punch is out this fall. So guys, like, look out for that. It's like so cool. It's probably going to be like the best. She's got like two singles off it. Um, I listen to Melanie Martinez. Right. and. Ariana Grande. <laughs> okay, so you say more on the oldie side or the contemporary side? Like contemporary. Music? You don't like old music? Not really. Old no. Old rock's pretty cool. Avril Lavigne. Oh, I listen to Avril Lavigne too. Really? Yeah, okay. I love Avril. More controversial. Mm. What's your favorite Avril song? Don't have one. Oh, oop. Yeah, unfortunately. Crazy. <laughs> Do you want to recommend for me? Bite me. Twenty twenty one. Tease. Mm -hmm. Right then. So we're talking about school, we're talking about balance, we're talking about religion. Mm -hmm. Anything else you got to get off your chest? You got tattoos, piercings. Oh, like <laughs> body mods. Okay, yes. so crazy thing. I started getting tattoos in tenth grade. I was a very rebellious child. Wow. <laughs> How did that work out for you? Um. Okay. So for the fr like the first one that I got, I took a picture of my brother's phone because my phone was gotten for me at the time because I had to study and then. I logged on to my Facebook because I loved Facebook at the time yeah. and I, I posted it on my story. My mom didn't know we're friends so um, I go back home and I had left the picture on my brother's phone and she comes and she's like oh I saw something on your hand is it a tattoo and I was like oh no it's not a tattoo it's henna. She was like oh okay cool then I came back with another one and she's like oh so you're getting tattoos now and I was like yeah you've got tattoos too and she was like oh okay a bit like that and you know it became a journey. I love butterflies. It's my spirit animal. How did you find that out? There was one particular butterfly that used to visit me every, at a specific time of mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. And that's when I intuitively felt that the butterfly is actually a huge omen to me because they represent recreation, growth, stability, balance, creativity, and one discovering their true selves also. So I usually evoke my art around the butterfly. So whenever I'm writing in a book or like when I'm scribbling, the first thing I usually write or draw is like a butterfly. And then I start writing my work. Ah, okay. So, and yeah. you got some interesting pieces there. Eh? Oh, so, these? Yeah, what's going on with the chain going on the chain? What'd you call it? It's called the evil eye neck chain. Evil meaning good or? No, like it just keeps bad energy away from you because you know people really be moving with bad vibes lately. Have you ever heard of energy vampires? No. 
Energy vampires are basically people that um, drain you of your energy and um, you feel like an energetic transference is occurring when you're in their presence and when you sit next to them you feel so weak, you feel demoralized too and you just feel, you, you like lose your sense of stability when you're around them then you know someone's draining your energy and they're a vampire so vampires are real too right and does Kambulani have a love life? a love life? Yeah. oh my love life is like so dead right now like it's, it's crazy i think it's really sad there it's like so sad like i'm not seeing anyone and like it's, it's like so embarrassing because you know my friends <laughs> like no like I saw, <laughs> my <right>. friends <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you wanna take a step? My fr- <laughs> As I should. <laughs> My friends are out here with your like mans and everything and like it is a little bit intimidating, especially when you're like at a boarding house setup and like you see these little cliques, people, and you're like alienated because you're like the alternative guy that's weird and has tattoos and mm. sings in the walkways uh-huh. and everyone's freaked out by that shit. But like I love it, you know? <laughs> I really do. I'm sure there's someone out there for everyone. I probably will find someone. I hope I will one day. Wherever you are, locate me. Do you like, think here or you travel like, what's your... I don't know. I read my tarot before I came here and it said I'll find a lot of connections, but none of them will be true and authentic and it'll only happen after I leave university. <laughs> Believe you me, that's been happening. I've I've had so many encounters with people that say they like me. I'll say mm-hmm. they like something about me, mm-hmm. but they just don't really like me, or they're just like really boring. And I've got a problem. I get bored so easily, and like oh. it's so draining. A typical Osaka gym. Why are you getting bored easily? I'm, I'm very impatient. I'm like my aunt. <laughs> She's so impatient, but like we're, we're like so similar. We're like the same person. Right. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we've spoken about it a lot. Yeah, we have. And yeah, it's been a whirlwind conversation. So, anything else you, any other direction you'd like to spin us in? Rabbit hole, you want to take us down? Hmm. 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 Yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could talk more about like music. What kind of music do you like? Yeah. I'm not being interviewed, man. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, like, let's, let's communicate. Okay, fair music enough. I listen to R and B. Oh, okay. So, mm. uh, Afro beats. I'm really into jazz. Afro jazz, blues. Okay. Like Masego. Mm. If you know about it. Devin Morrison. Mm-mm. Yeah, I recommend some people for mm-hmm. you. So. You said? Yeah, mm. just did. So, fashion. Hmm. Mm. Oh. Fashion is good, you know? Let's go there. All right. Fashion. Um, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to switch up my style to be more like early 2000s rock princess, you know? That's a lot of words, yeah? Yeah, yeah like an early rock princess. I'll probably give it a, a, the best example of that would be Princess Brie, you have to check out her music. She's oh, I, I listen to her too. She's so cool. She's in Canada. Good friend of mine. Um, she commented on one of my covers one time. Mm-hmm. She's verified on all platforms. So cool. So cute. She's so tiny. She literally looks like a pixie, and I think she's a pixie. Right. <laughs> yeah, I really think she's a pixie. Nice. Colors here crazy all the time. Great fashion sense. I yeah. bought um, I bought a top from a Depop one time. It says shock. It's so cute. It's like tiny, and it fits me so well. Okay. So, I'll probably start wearing it when I get my belly pierced. So, do clubs. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Run that back. What did you say? I'll probably start wearing it when I get my belly pierced. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, what's, is there any significance there? What's I just really want to navel piercing because my stomach's really tiny. Cute. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. So we're talking about fashion. How do you feel when you wear good set clothes? Like, is clothes for you showing who you really are? Mm. Or is it just like I'm just wearing some shit I got from Salawula? Or is it <laughs> clothes are a representation of my true and authentic self. Yeah. That's, that's 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 the best way I can express how I feel okay. and the person that I want to become. Mm-hmm. Also, you know. Yeah. So I'm just very in touch with my femininity. Like. You mentioned, yeah. Mm-hmm. And how has that been? Amazing. I mean, it's been difficult. It was hard to accept. Like, I just never knew why I liked playing with dolls as a kid. And my parents were so encouraging of it, though. I had like, I had like 40 unique dolls. I had 10 Barbies that were like antique. 
I never opened them, they were in the boxes. I had one Bella doll. Bella dolls come from France and she was really pretty. She had like this nice strawberry blonde hair and these cute shorts. And um, I also had like a mermaid and like some other dolls, fairies and everything, just basic ones that we would like find at the store. But like every time, I always wanted to play with dolls. And like, I never knew what it was. And I never really knew what to feel about it. And then I asked my aunt one time, I was like, oh, I want to be a girl. And she was like, oh, to become a girl, you really have to go through a lot and you will become a girl one day. And um, I slept the next night and it just never happened. I was so pissed at her. I was like, you said I was going to become a girl and like it just didn't happen at all. So it really did irritate me. But like, I finally understood exactly what I am. So. Okay, so as a kid, what was Kambulani's playground experience? Hmm. A lot of music. We love music. People loved singing around the house, so. Playground experience. Playground experience? Mm -hmm. Could you evaluate more? I mean, you, how was your socialization as a kid? Did you find it easy to make friends, hard? I really found it easy to make friends as a kid. Um, mm. I actually did have, a lot of kids loved coming to my house. Okay. It was, it was pretty cool. It was interesting. I loved my childhood. Both guys and girls? Yeah. I used to feel weird around guys, but I used to feel like a girl when I'm around girls. Do you feel weird? I used to feel attracted to them and I didn't know what it was. As a kid? Yeah. That's a bit mad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit, you know, that's a bit alright. Yeah, I was really young at the time, but... And so when did you know that you, or notice you were different? Is it like a age of 10, 12? When I was really, really young, I knew there was something special about me. I thought it was special? Yeah, I thought it was, yeah, I, I would call it special. It is something special. No, I'm saying at the time, did you think it was special? Did I know it was special at the did time? Did you think it was special? Yeah, I actually did think it was special. Okay. I felt magical, I felt different from the other kids. Wonderful. And how have your parents taken to magic? Mm, my mom's okay with it, you know. Our relationship could be better, but like, you know, we communicate. She ate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> my dad, um, biological father is very, I don't know. He's okay with it and like not okay with it sometimes. I really, I really don't know. I think he needs a coping mechanism to like accept me as I am because if he doesn't, at the end of the day, I still am his child and I'm not going anywhere. Well, when I die, I am leaving. So Are you though? You don't believe in an afterlife? I'm going to reincarnate into something bigger. Not a butterfly. Probably come back as a cat. <laughs> How's that big? <laughs> like a tiger, right? Cats are very, no, like a pet cat. But no, I know I'll become a mermaid when I die. Really? Yeah, I just want my ashes thrown in the... Siren. Probably a siren, yeah. All my ashes thrown into the ocean. You want to be a man hunter? No. Jesus Christ. I want to go to Atlantis. <laughs> Do you believe in that? What, sirens? No, sirens. Oh, well, I mean, I know you believe in supernatural, but you said Atlantis. You've got to say Atlantis. Oh, Atlantis? I think, yeah, I think it is real. Mm. And I think it does have mermaid inhabitants. You do it? I don't think they're friendly though. Yeah, they're not friendly though. <laughs> actually, no, actually, I hear they're very rude, but very attractive. I'm sure they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm oh, perfect. <laughs> right then. So, what else? I don't know. What else do you want to talk about? We've spoken about everything. I know, we really have. <laughs> right. So, would you have any advice for people struggling with accepting themselves? Yeah, I actually do have a lot of advice with people accepting to, struggling to accept themselves. So basically, if you're struggling with like gender identity or identity at the most, well, just ground yourself at the most and uh, drink tea first to start with. Yeah, like have some tea first. Sit down, talk to a trusted friend, preferably an older person or at least someone in your peer group that you, you know, feel more comfortable with and air out as much as possible of how you feel. Yeah. Like don't, don't limit yourself to what you feel because the first step to accepting yourself is just letting everything out. So you have to be like as authentic as possible with the person that you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And then as time goes by, you gradually learn to start to accept these sides of yourself because I've noticed, especially in this town, 
there's so many guys that are struggling with like their identities like so 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 many and like it's crazy talking about fragile masculinity are we? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that'll be another topic in itself. Mm -hmm. Any last words to, I don't know why you call your family this, but yeah. The little bot dolls. Um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I used to call myself the little goth doll yeah. when I was a kid because um, I liked anything gothic. It's a bit of a mouthful though. Hmm? It's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. It is. So yeah, so, so yeah, like um, look out for my music, stream it. Um, my album is coming soon. You guys are gonna love it. The visuals are so breathtaking and are like so amazing. Uh, if you're struggling to accept yourself, you can always reach out to me. I'm here. You know, I always care about you guys. I love you guys so much, and um, it was so fun. I love all of you guys, and I'm sending you guys love and light and abundance. Bismillah, blessings on your journey. Mm -hmm. We out. Alright guys, so this was Culture Talk. I had like a super amazing time and I think it would be like so good if you liked and subscribed it because his channel is like the shit. So please do that because I love him. He's so amazing and the people were like so cool because I'm so cool too. So please like, subscribe and share and um, bye. I stop and then start again. <laughs> Ariel, giving a voice to Ursula. Little Mermaid, 1989, here we go. <clears throat>